Today we're going to go through a protocol for taking Wonder surface water samples for doing metabolomics around the world. And if you have questions in this process, please reach out to us. Our contact information, our website, our social media information is at the end of this video. So the first thing you're going to get is the sampling kit that we'll mail to you. And the next step is to unpack it. To work through this protocol, you'll need the sampling kit that we send you, a device for taking spatial coordinates, a device for taking pictures, a cooler with wet or blue ice, a measuring tape, and a thermometer. When you open the kit, the first thing you'll see is a data sheet and a shipping label for returning the samples and a detailed protocol. And when you open up into the cooler, you'll then see a freezer pack for returning the samples and a syringe for collecting. Next will be a filter that is attached to a needle that will be used to inject the sample into a sampling vial. An extra filter that is closed, only used if needed. Gloves to minimize contamination. And an extra needle case it's needed. There are four vials in the box. Each have a label with a unique number to keep track of which samples were taken where. When you go to take samples, the first thing you'll want to do is make sure there's some downstream flow. Here we're just using a floating stick to confirm that you've got downstream transport. Then take the depth of the water, about a meter off the shoreline, and record the depth on the data sheet. Next you'll take the temperature at 50% of the depth that you just measured. And make sure to record that on the data sheet as well. The next thing you want to do is record your spatial coordinates in latitude and longitude using decimal degrees. Here we're using an app called My GPS Coordinates. You could use Google Maps, a regular GPS, or some other method. When you're ready to take a sample, first put on your gloves. Then you're going to open the syringe. Make sure to stand downstream of where you're sampling. Pull water from 50% depth, as you can see in the shot here. We're going to flush that syringe three times and then take sample water. After you flush it three times, fill the syringe and then you will connect it to the filter. It screws on with a lure fitting. Be sure not to touch the inlet of the filter or the output of the syringe. In this step, you'll be then removing the needle from the protective sleeve, and then you'll push a few mils of water through the filter, then get a vial, you'll notice that there's a cap over the septum. That's to keep the sample clean. So do not touch the septum and do not touch the needle. You'll push the needle through. In this case, you do not need to open the vial. This helps minimize contamination. At this point, you will then fill the vial about halfway full with sample. After you've collected your sample, place the filter needle assembly back into the filter sleeve, being very careful to keep it clean. Then place your sample into a cooler with wet or blue ice. Then come back and unscrew the syringe and take your next sample. Then repeat the sampling procedure, filling the next vials halfway full. Again, be careful not to touch the septum.
After you collect each sample, place it in the cooler until you've collected all replicates. Okay, now we're going to go over the protocol for filling the Sterabix filter with RNA later. That's the preservative that maintains the nucleic acid. We're filming this in the lab, but make sure this is done in the field. You need to do it right after you finish the sampling. So, one thing that's really important is the Sterabex is going to have a sample ID just like the vials. And you want to make sure you record the Sterabex sample IDs on the hard copy data sheet. First step here is to get the water out of the Sterabex. To do this, just unhook the syringe, fill it with air, goes back on. Then you want to remove the needle. And the goal here is to push as much water out as you can. It might take a few tries. You can refill the syringe a few times if you like. Get as much water out as possible. The next step is to seal off the bottom of the cerebex. For the video, we're using a closed valve, but we'll be sending along small lure lock caps. So you're going to take your cap, put it on to the outlet of the cerebex, screw it on there. Next thing you want to do is get a new 3 mil syringe, open that up, don't touch the outlet, get a new needle, open that, don't touch the inlet, put that together, and take the cap off. The vial we'll be sending along has RNA later in it, so this is the preservative, so you'll, you can invert the vial, so the septum's on the bottom, go right through the septum, and then pull three mils, just fill the syringe, about three, it's about three milliliters. Now, I'm gonna get the, get the, the needle off the end of the syringe. And here, now you're gonna take the Cerevex off. Connect that on. Now the key here is to have this going in this direction, so the syringe is pointing into the Sterebex, pointing down towards the ground. If you do this, do it this way, you can easily push the RNA later in. You'll feel some resistance. Once you've filled it, you can take the syringe off, and again, we'll be sending caps along, but as for demonstration here, you then put the top cap on. With the top and bottom cap, the Sterebex is sealed. Next step is to put it into Whirlpack. So, so it'll fit better with it's just caps, the valves are a little bit long. So take your filter, seal up the Whirlpack, put it into blue ice. And you want to make sure there's no water coming into the Whirlpack bag. So keep it sealed. And make sure you don't freeze them with the RNA later in that, that will cause them to burst. So you're just going to keep them cool blue ice in the field, refrigerator in the lab. After you've collected your samples, take pictures, starting with one going across the river, then take a picture upstream so you can see water, shoreline, and vegetation, then take a close-up of the sediments with a measuring tape out to 30 centimeters, then take a picture downstream so you can see water, shoreline, and vegetation. After you've collected your samples and taken your pictures, make sure you've filled out the hard copy data sheet, and then freeze the samples as soon as possible. Immediately submit the metadata using the digital form that can be found at wonders.pnnl.gov. Then repack the samples into the cooler, making sure to place each vial into its individual slot. Include the extra filter and make sure that it's still sealed. Then place the freezer pack on top. Replace the cooler lid. And include the hard copy data sheet. Then seal up the box. And the final step will be adhering the shipping label that's already filled out to ship back to us. All you need to do is drop it off at FedEx for overnight shipping.